So then this is going to be pretty much more of the same of what we've done with the, the door and the smaller window section. But I want to move this, I'm going to, it's getting a bit uh, cluttered here, so I'm going to move the object I'm working on closer to the center. But I just want to take all these and move them out of the, out of the way for the moment. And these interior ones as well. They want to keep them separated so it's easy to determine which one is which. But uh, for the moment, I'm just going to take this this fella here, bring him to the center, and I uh, will zoom on him by hitting the period key. So this has a modifier applied still. So I uh, I think that's I'm not going to be changing that modifier, so it's probably safe to uh, apply that at this point. And I will remove these middle edge sections. I'm just going to select it by holding the Alt key and clicking on one and I'll get the loop then. And I'll hold in shift, press Alt again and select the second loop. And X and dissolve edges. Now we will do what we done on the last one and we're just going to take a copy of these inside faces. I'll press shift and D and move my mouse around and then right click to put it back where it was and then with that selection still selected I want to press P and separate a selection. Then I'll come out of edit mode and reselect a new object. So now I'm going to be working on this one. I will be trying to mimic the way I made the frame here so I'll have a quick look at that for the sake of getting them looking right. So this one is extruding the touch on the front and I will end up duplicating that sill and dragging it over, elongating it a bit. I could actually probably just take that now. I'm going to make a copy of that and bring it over. So I press Shift D on that to copy. A Alt E will center that. For some reason centered there so I'll need to reset the form on this after I manually bring it over I press control oh sorry not control Q and all transforms so now there we are centered and I can actually just uh yeah this would be an easy one there um all I have to do from this is go into my front view I'll go into wireframe or not wireframe x-ray mode um, and I want to go into edit mode and go into vertex selection and I'm going to click and drag over one side of the object and now I just want to drag it with snap on so that it snaps to the wall on the far side of the window and now I'll just do the same on the opposite side so there we go that was pretty easy once the groundwork is done on one it makes the jobs on the other one very simple and for this the middle of this window, what I want is, um, I'll probably make it three sections. Kind of, just your general window, I guess. So I will take, I'm gonna take this inside section. And here's another short coming up for you. I'm gonna press Alt and select those polygons. And with them selected, if I hold Control and press the plus key, It'll spread that selection out with one polygon at a time. So it selects just those inside pieces. And I want to duplicate that. So I'm going to press Shift D and right click to put it back in place and E and separate to selection. Now, what am I going to do with this? I will probably, um, I'm going to need to shrink it down a little first. And to do that, I need to set the pivot point into the center of the object. So I will come out of edit mode, select the object and right click and say set origin to geometry. That'll put my pivot in the center where you can see this line. When I copied this, I copied it from the other window, which is linked by parenting. If you remember on the last uh, section I done, I linked all of this to each other. So we need to break that link. We don't want to be part of this object anymore. So to break that link, all we need to do is select the object, which is this one, I believe it is. Yep. So once we have that selected, then we go up to object, go to parent, and you want to clear and keep transformation. 
So now that took it away from having a link to this object so that when we move this now, yeah, all right, so there we go. So now these are objects of their own. And I'm gonna add them into their own category as well. I'll probably go through a maintenance cleanup and just put all these into their own um, their own collections because like that naming convention is just, it's not gonna help me at all. So we'll need to do a little bit of manual tidy up. But for the moment, I reckon we'll just continue with what we have here. Now I wanted to find three sections of this so that there's two windows on either side that open outwards and one in the middle that is uh, static that won't move so I'll start with that I think I'm just going to scale go into orthographic I want to scale this object down so that it's just coming to the edges you see up along here I just wanted to touch the top and the bottom so I'm going to scale that till it's roughly there and now normally I would scale by pressing the S key and as I showed I'd bring the cursor along the x-axis and then use the middle mouse to snap but I don't want to do that in this case because as you see it's squishing the side edges or the side polygons we don't want we want to keep that keep those um the volume of those polygons intact so for this case what I will do is I will um use probably I'll use the visible grid here. So we can see the grid in the background. There's kind of thicker gray lines. We know that that's every one incremental snap. So I'm going to start by bringing the edges of this into that line on both sides. While I'll go into um, edit mode, vertex, vertex selection, and I'll just manually drag that in. I have to go into X-ray, select through the mesh. And I'll bring that in until it's roughly there. Um, I don't think it snapped to it on the edge we wanted though. So I'll probably need to turn off my snap and I'll come in and manually line that up to it like this. It doesn't have to be exact. Once we're in the ballpark, we're probably okay. And I'll do the same then on this one. I'll just move it in till we're at the boulder line. And there we are. Right, so now we know we're pretty much centered there with the same distance on either side. So now if I turn snap on, I know that this is 10 bars, I, I think. So I will go five bars in on that and five in on that. And that should be me roughly centered there now. That looks pretty okay. So, would that give us the same on each side opposite now? And we'll test that. I'll come out of edit, select, shift D to copy it, and I'll drag over a little on the wide side, but that's okay. I'll do the same on the far side there. And now with that, I'm just going to... So I want these to be a little thinner. I'm just going to bring this in so that it snaps to... The edge of this window frame. Now it won't snap obviously because it's not set up um, so that it'll snap to that line but I can manually I, I can manually judge that by eye then. I'll do the same on this one. Yeah. That's kind of ballpark but it's okay. Alright, so something like that. Now, these have gaps in them. I can see them from here. So what I'll do is I'll select each one. I'm going to isolate it. I'll press the forward slash key. That's above the number eight on a standard keyboard. And I want to weld the verts. But I don't want to, I only want to weld them within a proximity of each other. So a way to do that is if I, with these three selected, I'm going to join them. So I'll press control and J. And you can see that moved my pivot point over to this fella, so I want it to be in the center. So I'll right click. Oh no, first I will Q, set all transforms, and now I'll right click and set origin to geometry. So that put me right in the middle of what I wanted here. 
Now I will go into edit mode. I'll press 1 to get my vertex select and then I'll press 8 to select every vertex. And now if I zoom in, say, take on this guy here, I'll select one for the moment and zoom in on him. You can see there's a slight gap there. Now I want to close this gap without welding this to this one, for instance. Okay, so I'm going to use a proximity based weld uh, algorithm that Blender has here. So I'll press 8 to select everything. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say merge vertices and then by distance. And then you can see here it says removed zero vertices. So we've uh, nothing put into this, like that's minimal. If we hold shift and then start moving this dial up, you see it snapped there and it told me removed eight vertices. And it says removed, it basically just merged them and got rid of the additional one. So that's roughly what I want. I know that that's going to be eight there. So if I want to just make sure that that fully welded, I hover over one of these um, polygons and I press L. Because that selected the entire mesh, I know it's all welded because every polygon is connected by vertices. So that's how you know that the vertices are closed up there. So this is one mesh now and it's in. So we can come out of isolate mode and I want to take a look at the thickness of it. I think it's too thick because it's the same thickness of the frame housing. So I want to move this in a little bit. I'll use the straight up um, scale tool for this. I'm just going to move it inwards. And I'll take a better look at it from this angle, maybe. Yeah, okay, that'll do fine. So now, the way this is going to work would be each of these smaller side windows are going to have. A section that opens outwards this is going to remain static so if you can imagine as this closes over it's going to overlap on this a little and this is going to be further back so what we need to do is create another piece that's going to sit over this on both sides and create a relief then and then it kind of dips in for this middle section here so the best way i think to maybe get that done would be to select these a ring of outer polys here so I'm holding down shift and pressing on the corner I hold down sorry hold down alt press on the corner and then here I'll hold down shift alt and press that one too and that's going to select two rings from it. and then I can press shift D to duplicate it right click to snap and then P and separate by selection now for this what I can do is add our solidify modifier and that will give me a little exterior thickness we'll go a little more so i will go back into edit mode i'll select my vertices i'll go into x-ray and i'm going to select the top and i'll move these down a touch the bottom I'll move them up a touch and just repeat these on all sides I guess and then I just need to bring these in a bit because no level of airtight like that would exist okay so that should be fine Could probably even make them a little thicker on the inside. Hold Alt and select, and now hold Shift Alt and select again. And I'm going to use the function we used on the last section as well. I'm going to go to extrude and extrude along normals, and I want this to extrude on the inside. So that's why we made the inside selection. There, we can just click and drag that a bit. say that and that gives us a double a double polygon strip there that we don't need so I will come out of that and I'm going to select that ring hold alt and click on the edge 
and hold shift and click on this one and X dissolve it is. Alright, now from that we've got a pretty basic window there as well. Now I just need to add in, like we did on the last one, uh, some window paint. So with nothing selected, I want to press Shift A, make a cube, and I'll go into front view. And then scale down until I have roughly the width of one of the windows here. I'm going to press G and move him up, and then I'll just move him into into um, place on one side because I'll probably mirror this then. So I'll get roughly the size I'm looking for. I want it to match on both sides first. Okay, so we actually need to go a little wider because this is going to be overlapping the window paint. So I'll just scale that up. Yeah, something like that should be fine. Right, so let me need to move it in. It's too, too thick, so I'll just crunch it in like this. I will uh, stop explaining at this point how I'm doing that. I'm pretty sure I've said it a thousand times. I'm just going to move this into place like that. Alright, and now we just need to um, move it up so that it fills the window pane. So I'll press 1, go into Vertex Select. Click and drag, and I'll press G and constrain my uh, my scale upwards. G middle mouse and constrain it downwards. Now, there we go. I'm going to press Q. All transforms to put my pivot point back in the center. At least it should have. There we go. And now I will draw a mirror onto this. And that does the other side for us. Now I can straight away apply that because I know that it's absolutely perfect because I set it up on that side perfect. I will um, duplicate one. I'll press L to select everything. No, I press K there. That's the cut. That's not what I want. All right. L. Now I'll press Shift and D to select. I'm going to move it to the center here. And now I'll press P, separate it by selection, select that selection, and I will right click. No, I won't. I'll press Q, all transforms, and I'll right click, set origin to geometry. So we have a nice clean mesh to work with here. And I'm just going to scale this on the x axis till it fills out the rest of this window. No need to come up here on the top a little. So I'll just select these top ferrets and move them up. And do the bottom as well. Move them down. Okay, so now, as I was saying, because these, um, these side windows are kind of extruding outwards, it means that this window pane is too, too far along the Y here. So I'm just going to push that back in until it's probably here, say. So with that, I'm going to take this segment and move this over to the done for now pile. But before I do, I want to reset the, those positions. So I'll press Q with everything selected. You can do more than one at, at a time. Select everything, press Q, all transforms. Now that they're all set to world origin, I'm going to turn my snap on. And I'll just move this over to the the rest. So we're not doing anything fancy with the corner units. We will make some fancy corner units down the line, but for the moment they're ready to go. This is a straight segment that doesn't need anything. So that's pretty much the building block for the outside. The interior pieces. I'm going to be doing similar, but not 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 exactly the same. It's going to have. Um, it's going to be the same technique essentially, but it's going to be a different design. So I'm going to just start with this door, say. I'm going to move him to the center of the world, Alt-G, and I'll press period to zoom on. 
Now, again, I'm not too fussed about how this one goes because this is the basic, basic um, demonstration of what, what, what to do in this case. After I get these done, I will be using reference, but I'm just going to go with my best idea of what an interior door looks like. So, I'm going to take a slightly different approach in this one. I'm going to, um, I'm going to make an object. I'm first going to put a frame onto this, similar to what we've done with the, the exterior one. But uh, I'll press Shift A and make make a cube again. Now I want this to be on my world origin, so I will turn snap on and I'll click and drag up one. That's snapped into the world, I'll press Q, set all transforms, and there we go. Now all I need to do is bring him one snap to the left, and I'm going to scale right down. Now, with that done, I will press Q, and I'm going to set all transforms again, because I want him to be in the center so I can mirror this. So I will add a mirror modifier. And now I'll go into edit mode and I'm going to start editing this square, this cube, to be the frame of this. Again, I'm going to keep it simple for now. And once it's in place, I'll start doing a couple cuts just to make it a little decorative. So I'm going to go into edit mode, into poly, select everything, and then I'm going to start manipulating this because I don't want it to manipulate the, um, the origin point. So I'll turn my snap off for this. This takes a little soft care it's going to bring it as such and i'll grab this face only i want it to come maybe maybe we'll go to here with it now i'll select the top and i'm going to bring this right up and again we're going to use the shear tool on this so i'll select the shear i'll go into front view I'm going to grab this yellow handle and I want to rotate that. No, it's not the yellow. Is it the green? Yeah, I want to move it up and release. And then I want to make sure where it says offset. I want to snap that to minus one. Now, that's our angle got. And I'll press E. And that's bringing the off in funny angle again. So I'll just right click. And now I'll manually just move this along the X. And I'll press S for scale. And I'm going to press X. Because I'm running on the X, ang X uh, axis. And then 0. To set that to 90 degrees. And then with that. Because that's selected. All I have to do is come up here to my transform. And then on X. I'll set this to 0. And that'll snap me then in the world center. Yeah, simple one that. Um, a little basic. So what I'll do is I'm going to add a cut. Maybe like this. And I'll add one more. I just want to give this a little decoration. I don't want it to be just flat. So I'll then select these outside edges. And you can see it's selected under the object and back up the other side. So what I'll do is I'll grab my scale tool. And I'm going to scale it in on the Y. Let's bring that in a little closer. It'll add just a little, a little decoration to it. Now a similar thing. I'm gonna, I'll end up making my own door for this as well. But for now, I'm gonna borrow what's already done. I'll press Shift and D, and I will press Alt and V to snap that to the center. There we go, and um, now I just want to take this inside the frame of this. I'll apply the mirror. I'm going to go into edit mode. I want to select the inside faces. I'll actually quickly get rid of that center line. So now I'll come back out of that. I don't want this to be so sharp. I'm going to select that front and back, and I'll press Control. B and give it just a touch of a bevel. Just want to help it catch that light. 
and to see if um to see if your curves and things like that have a nice look to them you could always just come out of wireframe and then go into say eevee here and just look and see it's a bit sharp but if i was to add a if I was to add a shade smooth onto that, it actually kind of it rounds it off nice. It's a little too soft, but um, when there's texture applied to that, it won't look so bad. So normally I don't like very hard edges on these things, even if it's going to be low poly. I'd rather make it like this, make your texture, and then probably weld them up and remove the extra verts that way. But uh, even in Eevee, actually, it doesn't look that bad. I'm not a big fan of the white material, so I'll probably quickly just... I want to make a new material for this, I think. I'll select the wall, create a new one of the materials, and I'll make the base color gray, maybe something like this. And while I'm here, actually, I might as well um, throw some ambient occlusion into this as well. Maybe give it a... Something like that, probably. Just, I like the way it kind of, it, it shows the curves better when you have uh, a little bit of shadow there. So I want to, yeah, I'm going to apply that same material to everything. So I'm going to press A to select everything. And then hold Shift and click the object with the material on it. In this case, it's the, the wall here. And then in material, which is this red ball looking thing here. On the drop down, click the drop down and say copy or copy material to select. And that'll copy that same material then onto all your other objects. So you can see then with the ambient occlusion on how your although your objects are very low poly, there's a nice nice curvature to them as well. I'll actually just test while I'm here. I want to see the other ones I made. See how they're looking. Yeah, so you can just imagine these now with um, with some texture on it. It might look nice. That's a very sharp edge there. So that's kind of that's the stuff I'd be saying now. I'd add a bevel on this edge. Um, that edge there will probably cause me problems. So for the moment, I'll leave it. I'll, when I'm UV unwrapping this, I'm going to optimize the way the topology is on it. I'll add the bevels that I need because I want to get a softer, a softer look to it. You can see here on um, the windows as well, it's very sharp. I don't really like that sharpness there. I was to select ease and bevel. Yeah, it's just a little nicer. I did want to do something else, didn't I? Yes, I want to add a, a stop to this. So I want to select this inside and select the polys. Now that probably ran underneath the object for me, did it? It didn't ran because we added a bevel that turned this into an angon, which will not let uh, the loop continue, which is perfectly fine because we're going to be removing these anyway. So let's just do it now. Now I want to try that again, Alt, Alt, click, and I want to duplicate this, so Alt, sorry, Shift, D, B, and separate by selection. Now with that, I want to go into Edge Select, around the back, grab the outer edge. I'm going to pull this forward until it's in front of the door like that and then the front edge of it I'll select as well and I'm going to move that back to give a couple inches of thickness just there and then with that I will go to my modifiers add a solidify modifier in the minus and I want to make sure that even thickness is turned on now I'll just bring that back a little Again, it's a sharp edge. So we only care about one side of this and um, because we're not going to see the side with the doorway there. I'll just get re remove 
deploy the modifier, which you can't do in edit mode, so come out of edit mode. Deploy the modifier and then remove these bottom faces. And now I'm going to bevel this edge. So control B and just add a blind bevel. So that's better. Yeah, that's the interior door we've done. And we can actually set this up as well. Um, we can set this door up so that the pivot's on the side. So we can actually make um, make a couple modules. Like say we wanted to duplicate this. Turn on snap and I'm going to move this one over to the side here. I'm going to select the door. It's A to select everything. I'm going to move it one bar to the left. That won't work. So I'm going to have to come out of snap. And I'll go into front view. And I want to line the edge of the door up where the pivot point is so let's say there and come back and now I want to turn snap back on and I'll bring them over uh, it's not really working out okay I'm gonna have to eyeball this again so I can all snap I'll bring it over to probably here and then with that like you can have this as one segment and then you can make your duplicates and then you can have this one with the door as such so there's like there's great things you can do with this when it comes to um, just reusing the same assets and they can both be individual pieces you know so imagine if you're in like a long a long hallway where there's many rooms you want some to be open some not that's how you probably go about that and then with small decorative props we do we can add maybe air vents on one one or two of them and it'll kind of help break up that repeated look that kind of plagues games nowadays you can see that they're using the same props over and over but by being clever with it you can kind of cunningly disguise that as well so i'm actually going to keep this um i will I'll need, uh, yeah, I'll need to um, re reset the form on this though because I opened that door. So I will just quickly select these objects from my snap on. I just want to move it over a little and I want to grab these and move them to the center. Now, with everything selected, I'll press Q, all transforms. Actually, I want to keep the transform on the door, I think, because at least then it's adjustable. So I'll select everything but the, the actual door I think that's now there's one more here and I'll press Q and all transforms now with that I can add this to my interior selection press alt and g to return him to the center and actually i'll call him done as well i don't think you could put a little doorknob on it but i'll do that in the detailing stage 